no matter how bad the relationship is and how horrible and painful it was, there is a beautiful lesson there that as long as you're willing to, to see it, that's when you're going to meet someone awesome the next time. Mm -hmm. So if someone has a history of bad relationships, I mean like one after the other after the other, how do we help them erase those memories and learn to trust love again? This is an amazing question and I deal with this with singles all the time, whether or not it's their first love or a divorce or maybe it was even their last relationship, that people have things that are just stuck yeah. and clogged and things that have happened, weird things and even not so weird things. Um, and what I see is that people have a lot of things that are unsaid. They just get, you know, they, maybe they haven't been heard by their partner or they just picked wrong. I call it the busted man picker, or the busted woman picker, right? You just picked somebody that wasn't good for you for whatever reason. And I find that I have to start with laying the foundation for somebody and clearing that stuff out, like leftovers, like residual relationship stuff. But once their mind is freed up and their heart's freed up and their body's freed up of all this stuff, they are so much happier and they're so much lighter and then their heart has a greater capacity to really love somebody fully and then they have the opportunity to have a better relationship like the relationship like they couldn't even imagine in their life. And it's so many times a woman will feel, how do I know? Because she fell in love. She felt this was the one. This is going to last forever because that's what love feels like. It's this eternal part of us. It's a soul connection. Mm -hmm. So how can I trust again? And women do have a greater introspective awareness, generally speaking. So average wise, it takes women much longer to get involved than guys. Mm -hmm. And guys do tend to think, I just picked the wrong one, I'm gonna pick another one. But women being more introspective will tend to question, but I thought he was the one, what went wrong? Mm -hmm. So from my perspective, you hit the first thing that needs to happen is, being able to share with somebody again and again what feelings come up, the emotions that haven't been spoken. Once you do that, you're connecting. And some people say, why are you doing that? Well, first of all, you'll feel better. Uh -huh. And second of all, you're connecting with your heart. It's your heart that knows love. And so you're constantly connecting what feelings are there. And they do, you go through them. You feel good after you release them, then you comes back again. There's waves of going through it. And then that's uh -huh. half the work. The other half of the work is beginning the question, how did I misunderstand my partner? How did they misunderstand me? It's emotions and mind. We really have to recognize after our emotions are kind of dealt with more, how did we misinterpret situations? What was our part of the situation? Even if it was just picking the wrong person or maybe almost right person, how did I contribute to it? Because that gives you a sense of power mm -hmm. and not blaming yourself. You first want to deal with some of the emotions, feel heard, validate, but understand how I contributed to it and how I misread the situation. And that's why I love Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. It gives us that perspective of, oh, this is what was going on. Oh, he didn't know to do this. If he had known yeah. to do that, it could have brought out the best side of me. And mm -hmm. if I had known to do this, it could bring out the best side of me. Now, having said that, doesn't mean every person is gonna work out for you, but some, re some relationships are learning lessons. Yes. Well, for relationships, um, you know, the, the question was erasing that. And for me, you know, I've seen it personally, I've, I've, I've gone through it where relationships really open the window of, you know, personal growth. And they really are lessons, as painful as they are. And a lot of the times I deal with women who are going through a painful divorce or breakup and they are just so hurt and they can't let go of it. They mm -hmm. can't let go and they, and they want to let go and they want and they want to move on and they can't move on. And so I always say, lean into that. Lean into that pain. Thank it and bless it. Because once you bless it and you thank this person who broke your heart, and I don't care if this person cheated on you and did awful things, but if you come to the place of thanking it, that to me, puts you in such a receiving place of receiving of, of open to, to change and love and, and receiving someone really healthy for you. Mm -hmm. So I think that no matter how bad the relationship is and how horrible and painful it was, there is a beautiful lesson there that as long as you're, um, as long as you're willing to, to see it, that's when you're gonna meet someone awesome the next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, I mean, I really appreciate what everyone is saying because I don't think it's about erasing, well, first of all, we don't really, we can't really do it in the eternal sunshine, right, of our brain. It's not really about erasing, <laughs> right. but 
It's about clearing out. I think what John said about connecting to the heart is so important so that you are in a place where you can move forward. I would, I have been through some seriously bad relationships and extreme pain, I would say, on many different levels. And looking back, I would never, ever want to erase those. It has made me the person I am today. It has allowed me to help other people. Um, it has changed the trajectory of my life. Totally. And it took me a long time because I was one of those people who would take John's book and be like, I'm gonna dissect that last relationship <laughs> for the next, you know, three years, basically. <laughs> Until I finally got to a place where I'm like, okay, I can thank this, I can bless this, and I can actually move forward. Now that was, you know, it's probably too long a period of time to do that, but I think it's so important that we don't run away from that pain because yeah. you're never gonna be able to run away from it. Yeah. 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 So it sounds like, you know, what we all agree on is that the first step is the feelings, acknowledging the feelings, feeling the feelings, getting in the, the muck of that, right? And then recognizing that there's a lift that comes from doing that painful work and then moving into the future of our lives. And you can do that with a coach, you can do it through great books, you know, you can do it through the support of your friends and family, but you have to start with the feelings.